Mirror Sayal is five minutes. Okay. I'm Talk quick. Put, <laughs> yes. I'm going to put the battery in. Please, would you count us down? Five, four, three, two, one. Five. Here we go. Four, three, two, one. Go. Away from the public glare, are you an outgoing person or a shy person or a bit of both? Uh, I think I'm quite reserved, actually. Um, yeah, I would say. I mean, I think I save up my extrovert bits for when I'm being paid. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Oh, that's really hard. Um, you can have a sentence. A sentence. Uh, I'm a plump brown girl from the Midlands who made good. <laughs> How did you get into showbiz? Accidentally, like most people. Um, I've done a degree at English, uh, English and Drama degree at Manchester. I was on my way to do an MA. Did a one-woman show, which went to Edinburgh. Got offered a job with an equity card at the Royal Court by a director who saw me and... That was my sliding doors moment. Could have gone one way or the other and ended up going to show business. What was it like being brought up a British Asian girl in a little village near Wolverhampton? Very amusing and confusing. Uh, schizophrenic existence, like most first generation immigrants, I think. So very Indian and Punjabi inside the house and very Midland wench outside it. And I used to swap masks all the time, um, which made for a lot of absurdity and... Uh, fantastic writing material. Your grandfathers were both involved in the movement to get the British out of India, is that right? That's right, yes, both of them. How big an impact has your past had on your life, do you think, or where your parents came from, your grandparents came from? I think huge, actually. Um, were your <coughs> parents born in Britain? No, my parents came over to Britain in 1960 from New Delhi. Um, for better opportunities, really. They were both educated but poor or at least not connected enough to bribe their way into the best institutions as one had to do. Or one still does sometimes in India. Um, but I, I feel that I carry a sort of, it's not a burden, but I feel a, almost a sense of responsibility because I'm really aware of the sacrifices that have gone before me and the struggle. And my parents and grandparents have lived through incredibly epic, traumatic times, which I don't think our cosseted generation can sort of imagine. And because of their struggle and sacrifice, I've had quite a nice life. And so there is a part of me that feels, firstly, I should give something back along the way, but also that I should always be very aware and proud of my heritage and what I'm continuing. You do different things in your career. You write, you screen write, you write novels, you act, TV, film, theatre. When are you most you? Doing what? Oh, God. Uh, netball. I play netball and I box. I love boxing. Do you? Yeah. I hope that's not the real me, though, because I'm nasty in the ring. So in terms um, of your career? In terms of my career, what's What do you find most satisfying? Well, there is nothing like live performance, um, whether that is singing or performing. Uh, singing is more nerve-wracking if you're being judged by your peers. I suppose I feel a bit more confident acting. Well, I love singing. Um, but I think it's the life makes sense when I'm doing that. Do you enjoy having a freelance sort of career? Is there structure? Do you just go with the flow? You sort of have to really, unless you're one of the really, really lucky 1% of equity who can say, oh, I'm doing a film and then I'm doing this and doing that. I mean, for most of us it is, well, I've just finished something and what's coming next? And actually it did take me quite a long time to get used to that being, you know, of immigrant stock, we like security and we like, you know, the pension plan and the mortgage and everything in place. And so it was quite hard to get out of that mindset and and sort of, you know, go on the trapeze without a net, really. I'm going to speed up. Um, do you change when you're performing on stage from night to night? Do you change little things or do you stay the same? Inevitably, every performance is different, and, and that's what makes it so magical, because every audience is different. And with live performance, the, you, your response to the audience and what the audience is giving you is, is different every night. Sometimes they're very quiet, sometimes they're noisy, sometimes they're fidgety. So you'll find that your performance will shift anyway. You may say the lines the same way, but maybe the way you are holding them is different. But that's the challenge of it. How do you prepare for a part? How do you learn your lines? How do you get into the persona? <laughs> well, I do some research, and I think, you know, for Sister George, uh, certainly it was important because it was a character from a different time the period. The killing of Sister the killing George. killing of Sister George, playing the, the famous Beryl Reed part. 
So I'm playing a sort of, um, you know, a, 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 a lesbian from 1968 who's a radio soap star. Eight seconds. Uh, so that's quite far away from me, so I had to do a bit of research and it was great. And that... <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> the bell almost didn't go. That's five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>